Hey Veritas, I'm watching your video, replying to your video, Science is a Slave to Philosophy, um, Elitism in the Sciences, because uh, you seem to have, have, have seem to have had the same kind of problems I've had with scientists, but I've had them with philosophical students, um, philosophy students, sorry. Um, quickly, my whole take on the thing before I watch your video and comment in little bits is, uh, um, a scientist needs both to use well, I'm a, I'm a physicist, so I always look at things from a physics point of view. Um, it's technically, if you look at science as a whole, they're all subsets of physics. They're the study of the physical world. Now, I view philosophy and mathematics as, as, as like the same level as compared to studying physics and real science. Um, you're sort of lost with either, without either. Uh, if, you, if you don't have mathematics, it's um, not impossible, but quite hard to do real science. Just the same as if you don't have philosophy or philosophical ideas in the back of your mind while you're doing the science or using those philosophical, uh, philosophical ideas or you know, running, running along a path sort of first nutted out by these philosophical ideas, then you're running into the same trouble as, as if you were trying to do physics without the mathematical side. So they're both needed, there's no doubt about that. I think what, what the scientists you're talking about are um, referring to when they say, um, when they generally have a go at uh, f um, philosophy students and philosophers in general, is that philosophy itself, um, if you study philosophy and, and nothing else, that is, that is like a waste of time, sort of. And that's what they might be referring to, is just, just the people that only study philosophy for philosophy's sake. Uh, I mean, it's, it's useful. Again, it's the same as people that study mathematics for mathematics' sake. It really gets you nowhere and achieves nothing. But, um, yeah, little kernels and nuggets of truth, little uh, things that fall out of those purely pure mathematical studies or pure philosophical studies, yeah, you know, readily picked up by uh, by you know physicists and other scientists in their in their work, theoretical or otherwise. Now that brings me back to another point I was gonna, going to mention about your previous video um, about your morality. Um, just let me think for a second here. You were talking about um, mathematics and the way it perfectly, uh, uh, sorry, the way some mathematician will do something just for his own pleasure um, and 200 years later uh, a physicist or a, a theorist will pick that up and oh my god, it's the perfect tool I've been looking for to, you know, you know, uh, slash my way through this uh, 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 mathematical jungle I've found myself in in my studies. And the same, you know, sometimes physicists and even get stuck mathematically in a in a problem that has never cropped up before, and it's, it's not it's not unusual to find the answer in um. Some, the work of some mathematician who did it yeah, just for his own pleasure. So there is something to be said for pure mathematicians and you know, pure philosophical philosophers. I mean, they're very, very useful work that, that, that's been done there. But I think what the, the scientists are trying to say is that the only real you know, advancement and the only real um, you know, physical things we can use and see uh, come from the sciences, um, which, which of course, as you say, they're one hundred percent supported by mathemat by mathematics and whoop, sorry about that, but by mathematics and philosophy. Anyway, that, that that's my whole take on the the whole issue of the physics, philosophy, and mathematics. Um, yeah, they're all they're all uh, codependent, I suppose you could could call it. Okay, let's. Uh, my first little rant, I'll watch the rest of the video and see what else I can comment on. Uh, I guess it's funny you say this, um, science will always be a slave to philosophy. Uh, I suppose you could look at it that way, whereas I'd, I tend to look at it more in the, um, in the light of uh, philosophy will always be a tool of science. Um, it depends, I suppose, on your perspective, but both statements are equally true. Yeah, philosophy will. I mean, sorry, science will never really be a tool in in the 
uh, in the in the meaning of you will make something in the end, you know, make some kind of uh, technological advancement through philosophy using science as a tool. Now that's that's not going to happen. Um, physics and science use philosophy and mathematics as tools to technologically advance our civilization. So you know, science is a slave to philosophy in one respect, well definitely of course, because it's, it's hard to do it without. It's hard to do meaningful science without you know, proper thought out um, philosophy behind it. Uh, yeah, but I, I tend to look at that statement more as um, philosophy is a tool to science. <laughs> uh, and the usefulness of the tool as compared to mathematics and other tools yeah, that that in itself is an maybe the interesting debate that could would uh, uh, be more useful to have right here onwards. Okay, those scientists you uh, mentioned saying that um, philosophy is pointless. Well, the same arguments could be made for them. Uh, sorry, <laughs> they could make the same arguments and level them at uh, pure mathematics. Um, Pure mathematics is just as much as a flight of fancy that produces no results as uh, a pure, a pure philosoph philosopher. Um, you know, I believe all three of those, uh, all three of those studies, uh, physics, uh, philosophy, and mathematics, really need to go hand in hand. You can't, you can't do one without the other. Sure enough, you can specialize in in one. Um, that's no problem, but you still need a working knowledge of the other two. If you want to be a productive thinker, you know, and, uh, or, and actually achieve something, you really can't ignore any of those three studies. Um, you know, and really, if you didn't, if you had an equal knowledge of all three, that would be ideal. But you know, humans are humans; we have our preferences. So, uh, but you should never let those preferences wholly absorb your study. Now, I'm all, I've always thought that, you know, a physics course, a science course at university should have a prerequisite philosophy of science attached to it. You know, any subject you specialize in university should have um, the philosophy relating to that subject attached to it, you know, if only to facilitate, facilitate um, discussion on the philosophy and the, and the concepts and, uh, and maybe the ethics raised in that subject. You know, genetics comes to hand like for, for the ethical debate. But to have, say, um, genetics uh, Genetic students going through university their whole uh, their whole degree and not ever engaging in an ethical debate or you know taking a, a philosophy of their of science class is pretty is pretty crazy and by the same token having all the philosoph all the philosophy subjects crammed into one philosophy course is equally ludicrous because they're useless without their parent subjects you know or, or sorry not useless as such but more useful attached to their parent subjects. Um, and philosophy for its own sake <coughs> can also be just as pure mathematics, you know, a high level um, university course. If you, if you swing that way um, and you end up doing a, a purely philosophical degree, you know, that's fine, but to get there you should have gone through the levels of you know, at least learning some maths and some physics first before you decide to specialize in that. Just as if you want to specialize in physics, you should in your early years at least do a lot a good bit of groundwork in uh, mathematics, which you really have to, and uh, in philosophy. Anyway, that's just my whole take on that, that situation. Oh, geez, my comments are running a bit long here. I'm sorry, I, I really do ramble, hey? Uh, true, science is not the only tool in the shed, but um, is it the best tool in the shed? Yeah, you know, judging by what it's done for our civilization, or you know how it's advanced our understanding of the natural world, it's hard to say that it. Uh, well, early philosophy um, did you know leaps and bounds to further our understanding of of the world we live in. It's true, uh, but its time has passed. The best tool in the sh in the shed now. Is um is of course science, and who knows later on maybe another another tool will surpass physics in our understanding of the known the known world and how to understand it. But I think it'd be hard to argue against science being 
the best tool in the shed at the present moment. Yes, interesting. I like these tool shed analogies. This, this is the perfect way to talk about this. Nice and simple. Anyway, I find strange things amusing. <laughs>